So I haven't posted in a little while. I've actually had to uh, help some family get uh, a room renovated. Finished up all that sort of stuff now, so I thought I'd actually move back to showing you what I'm doing as far as the moulding is concerned. Uh, today I'm actually working on producing the mother moulds. You can see that I've prepped the back piece there, uh, and I just thought I'd actually do the chest piece so that you can actually see how it's done. The first thing is I've got a board that's covered with glad wrap. The idea behind that is that I'm using uh, hessian and plaster method, uh, and that's just so that it doesn't actually stick to the board. There's a couple of ways that you can actually do the mother moulds. Uh, I'm using a loose weave hessian um, so that it works pretty much the way as a plaster bandage would work so that the uh, plaster can push through the weave and that's what creates the support structure. The other method you can use is actually fiberglass. Uh, each method has their own advantages and disadvantages. Uh, the biggest advantage uh, with the fiberglass is that it is a more durable mould. They tend to last a little bit longer uh, and they are a bit harder as well. Um, the biggest advantage with the plaster moulds is that they're quite uh, quick and relatively clean in terms of uh, you're not working with any chemicals or anything like that at all. But they are a little bit heavier and obviously they're not quite as durable. But being that I'm actually not making hundreds of these pieces, uh, it's going to be more than suitable for the technique that I'm actually using. So this is the chest piece and you can see how we've got a really complicated sort of seam line. The reason why I've done a line around the outside edge and sort of not just down the centre so that I actually have the seam placed in an area which is right on the sharp edge of the piece here which means the cleanup is going to be very very easy when it comes to separating the mould um, and it should be next to invisible once the actual seam is actually done. Uh, the other thing that you can notice is I've actually done it so that the sharp edge seam is actually on the inside of the piece so that any flaws that may show up will actually be on the inside part of the, the moulding and uh, would be invisible rather than being a seam down the centre of the chest plate or, or something like that. The roll of hessian that I'm working with is an open weave hessian. Um, it probably cost me about $12 I think it was for this roll from a local hardware shop. The major reason why I'm using this is because it needs um, the plaster needs to have a certain amount of reinforcement added to it so that the, it maintains its structural strength and you have less issues as far as cracking is concerned. These moulds need to be clamped down uh, fairly tightly together. You need the outer mother mould to actually be able to support a bit of tension against it so that it's not going to collapse. So what I've done is basically cut up some pieces um, of varying sort of sizes and then I'll uh, lay them out onto the actual piece and start plastering them in. The other thing I'll do with these is make sure that these have been wet, pre-wet, so that they actually absorb the plaster a little bit better. Uh, and generally speaking, it's just a matter of placing them out uh, and moulding them over the piece, uh, moulding them over the piece by hand. And generally, you'll lay one in one direction and one in the opposite direction, so that you're actually uh, building up that strength. So I've mixed up uh, the plaster to like a thick porridge sort of consistency. Um, I'm not too much worried about the, the lumps and stuff that are actually in at the moment because a lot of that will actually smooth out as I actually start to apply it to the, uh, to the mould. And I've also got the, uh, the pieces of hessian soaking in water there so that they're, uh, they'll take in the plaster a lot better as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is try and give this, the, the entire surface just a good coverage. So once I've got a pretty good coverage, it's just a matter of starting to apply the, the hessian. Now, just to make sure that everything stays in place, one large piece, which is big enough to cover the entire mould in one go, but when I put this one down, I'm going to sprinkle some of the um, dry powder, dry plaster over the top of it to start to thicken up the mould area. And again, I'm not worried about where that seems to because all this unnecessary stuff will be trimmed off. So from here, I'm just trying to work in all the plaster and make sure that there's no air bubbles and then it smooths off that top a little nicer. You can see that the, um, the plaster has become quite runny there now and that's where to finish it off I'm just going to sprinkle some dry stuff on top make sure that it hardens a little better or thickens a little better on top.
So that's uh, pretty much the method. I'll let that set now. It's quite a cool sort of wet day here today, so it's going to take probably overnight until that's probably cured fairly well. Uh, this is the one I did yesterday, and um, the, the big difference that I've, you can see here is it's still quite rough around the edges because as I've trimmed those edges off, I've mixed up a little bit more slurry uh, and just added in to take the furriness off the edge of the hessian. Uh, that'll be cleaned up again now, um, back to nice and tidy, and I'll put some separating agent on it so that the mould doesn't stick together. And um, from there now I can actually do the other half of the silicon mould, and then that'll be ready for, for pouring out into a piece.